speak up. You are the voice of your child. And if you have this this gut feeling, like we did, we're a perfect example. We were given the green light when they, we had a minor scare during pregnancy and we, we still had that feeling that there was something wrong, speak up. You, you, you are the voice, you have to advocate for your child, you know your child best. So don't be afraid because more than likely that gut feeling is right. Don't let their condition necessarily be a barrier. You, I mean, you never know how things are gonna turn out. Um, when we decided to adopt my son, we had no idea that he was going to have special needs or that things were going to be difficult. I have just learned that every kid is special. And even if your kid has special needs, that they can still have a full and happy life and their disability doesn't need to hold them back. One of the things that I think is really important is that at the beginning, when all of this is new to you, it's very easy to be like, I can't do this. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but you will figure it out because it will become your normal and you'll learn all these things that you've never even heard of before. And it will become so normal to you that you don't even second think about the decisions you're making day to day. And it might not get easier, but the way that you cope with it will become easier. The, the main thing I would say is when this child goes through all the different stages, they're going to limit themselves. They're going to physically, but the main thing is don't limit your heart baby mentally or intellectually. Is there any recommendation that you have for mothers who are going into surgery um, with their young ones? What should they bring? Um, I, so I would bring, you know, your, your, your phone and your chargers, always remember your chargers. It can get really dry in there. So I would bring some chapstick. I'd bring some lotions for your hands. Um, I'd bring some things to keep you busy, whether you knit or you crochet or just coloring, bring some music like your iPod, bring some snacks. You know, I mean, you can, you can get food there and you can get, but it's nice to have your own snacks there. Being a single mom, the, the thing you need the most when, whether your child is healthy or not is just support. Definitely I have a lot of support and I don't, I don't know that I could do this without the support that I have. Um, I would definitely say stay off of Google. I think that was the worst thing I did. All the only thing I had access to was Google and I don't know why but it just leads you down the worst possible rabbit holes um, for this condition. So I would say stay off Google, speak to your doctor about your child and their specific condition because every HOHS condition is slightly different um, because it is an umbrella term. They're not all exactly the same cookie cutter conditions. So stay off Google, listen to what your doctor says about your child because it's always going to be different to somebody else's um, and your journey is always going to be different to somebody else's. Definitely check with your cardiologist depending on the vascular and the blood flow and the circulation, things like that. But I am a huge believer in massage of feet and head and hands. Just relaxing, it helps their circulation. I can tell their blood flow improves. Is, you know, to me, it's very healing. The big thing that I did was for Indiana in particular, and some hospitals may not allow this, but Mass General did um, in the PICU. I took all of, in, not all of them, but quite a bit of Indiana's toys and blankets, and I decorated the room. So I had like her blankets all over the place. I had like stuffed animals hanging off of, you know, IV things that they weren't using. <laughs> I wouldn't do that, you know, anything that didn't get in the way. And they loved it. They were like, this is great. You know, you're gonna be there for at least a week. Um, we were there for five days. And it's just nice having something familiar um, because the inside of a hospital room, it's just white, you know, barren. There's nothing really there. It's cold. It's not very homey. Um, so that would be a big thing. Um, definitely bring some stuff that makes it more like home um, for you, your family, and your child especially. You know, I had to have a different kind of patients, especially work dealing with doctors, dealing with so keeping so many specialist appointments straight and having things changed, um, dealing with insurance companies. That's a big one that I've had to learn a lot of patience with. Anybody who has a medical need knows how difficult insurance companies can be. In general, um, once you have a child with congenital heart disease, you, it becomes the family's entire focus. 
and it takes knowledge to raise that one baby, but don't neglect your other children. Let them make decisions in vacations and let them make decisions of, you know, anything you want to do as a family, that it, it can't just always be about the congenital heart disease baby. Right. I, get, I get joy out of knowing that I've given him the best life that he can possibly have. I would just say that if you're thinking about adopting a kid with special needs, realize that it's going to be difficult, but it's probably going to be the most rewarding thing you've ever done. Not doubt yourself, not doubt your ability to cope with it. It is going to be new at first and it will be hard, but as time goes on, you'll become the pro at this. You'll become the advocate and you'll be the one that knows your child best inside and out. And all of their medical history will just roll off the tongue whenever it's asked about and you won't have to worry so much. Um, the situations might not get easier, but the way that you cope with them will, because you would have learned how to cope with anything that's thrown at you. And those really hard days become slightly easier.